All right, welcome back. So this is going to be a, a redo of my Codewalker tutorial. This was the most requested uh, tutorial on my Discord. So that's the one I will be doing. Uh, it is basically me going over Codewalker, uh, Codewalker features and how to do things with Codewalker like from A to Z. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump into it, I guess. So first things first, people seem to be struggling with downloading the, the right version of Code Walker. So first thing you want to do is go down in my description uh, and you want to join DexFX Code Walker Discord, which is where you get the latest version. The one on GTA 5 mods is very outdated and does not have like <laughs> basically 90% 90% of the features that we we need at this point. So join his Discord and then in his discord under releases you can see there's a long list of uh dev versions in this case dev 33 is the latest one obviously if there's a new one download that one but for this one for this tutorial we're going to download dev 33 so i'm going to download that one there and then i'm going to open up the zip file usually i just place these out, out on my desktop uh just because it's easier for me but for this tutorial i'm going to create a new folder this is really up to you what you want to do uh, i'm just going to create a new folder connect folder call, call it code walker tutorial and then open that one up in here i'm going to place the code walker 30 dev 33 folder as well so i'm just going to drag it in there and we're done with this so we're going to close that so if we open the code walker folder up we're going to have a few dot exes uh, most of these tools we won't be using. We're most likely only going to be using the RPF Explorer and the CodeWalker.exe. Uh, the RPF Explorer is basically the CodeWalker versions of, of OpenIV, which has a lot of different features and more features than OpenIV. The only thing you really need OpenIV for is the open format, which is for model editing and uh, doing things in 3ds Max with, with GIMS Evo. Other than that, you can basically use RPF Explorer for everything else. Then we have the codewalker.exe, which is the one we're going to be looking at today. So, I'm just going to double click on this. It's going to ask you to auto detect game folder. You're just going to click on yes. Obviously, if it doesn't auto detect, you're going to find your folder, which is going to be the GTA uh, folder with your, your exe file in it. In this case, it found it in my Steam apps. So, we're just going to click on OK and then OK. It is now going to open up Codewalker and where it's going to load the, the different files. Um, keep in mind, the first time you open Codewalker, it is going to be default, uh, no DLCs, and no mods. So we're basically on the first version of GTA. So there's going to be a lot of things missing. So what you want to do is uh, you want to maximize the, the window. That's the first thing. And you want to click on this arrow up in the top right corner. And before you ask, the reason I have dark mode on my code worker is because I modded or changed my uh, Windows theme. I am using what's called Penumbra 10. So if you want the same thing, you can download that. I'm not going to go into anything else about that. <clears throat> so what you want to do is you want to click on enable mods. Even though you don't have any mods installed, you want to just have this on by default. You also want to click on enable DLC. <coughs> So, something to keep in mind is when you enable DLCs, uh, some things in the world are going to change. You can see on the latest MP highs, there's this thing floating in the air. If we disable the DLC, this thing is going to disappear. So there's a few things in the world that are changing depending on if you have a DLC enabled and disabled. This also counts for versions of uh, YMAPs, models, and other things. So make sure you always have DLC enabled so you have the latest versions of what you want to work on. If you work on an older version, it's not going to work when you try to stream it or if you try to modify it or if you try to change the texture or anything because you're streaming the old version that is not used anymore. You can also mess with the uh, DLC. So what DLC you're using. Uh, sometimes there's some things that appear on some DLCs that do not appear on other DLCs. So mess around with that if there's something you feel like is missing specifically. So for the controls, um, 
the code walker controls are pretty straightforward uh you left click to look around you get used to this pretty quickly you use wasd to move so when you combine left click left click and wasd you can just kind of you know, fly around uh shift will let you speed up the camera so you can see i now fly quicker uh and the scroll wheel on your mouse will adjust the camera speed as well. So you can see if I scroll backwards, it is speeding up the camera. If you scroll forward, it's slowing down the camera. So personally, I usually go around this speed and then I use shift to move quicker around the area. So next thing uh, you wanna do, cause I kind of forgot. We have enabled DLC and we have enabled MUDs. You want to go to options and you want to go to lighting. Uh, deferred shading is on by default. Uh, this is good when you work on things like interiors and you work on things like, let's say, uh, lamps and you want to see the lights. Um, you can see if I turn deferred shading off, every light around here is turning on and off. This also goes for, let's say, interiors. So if we turn this night, and I'm messing with the, the light by right clicking and dragging around and see if it messes with the time of day over here. So we go to nighttime and we now go inside. You can see it's really fucking dark. So if you turn deferred shading on, you now have a rough uh, idea about what the, the light here is going to look like. So I suggest you have this off and then you just make sure you have the time set to around 12 o'clock. And then you're going to go down here and you're going to click on save settings. Obviously, you have a lot of options that you can mess around with, especially if you have a potato PC, you can turn a lot of these settings off. You also have weather effects you can you can check. So let's say Xmas. You can see it turns really uh, bluish. But extra sunny is usually the one to go for. It gives you a rough idea of how things are going to work. So you can mess around with all of these settings. They're not going to break anything. Uh, so, just, yeah. All right. So next thing we want to, we want to modify and create our own Y maps. Uh, y maps are basically a file containing the information and location rotation of a entity. So if we on your, our keyboard or on your keyboard, you click on T, it's going to open the top left menu. Uh, this menu allows you to select, rotate, uh, move things about, uh, and all of basically that. So we are going to find a spot. In this case, I think I'm going to go down to the beach just because it's such an open area. It gives us lots of, uh, lots of, uh, space to work on. I'm going to go over here and then we are going to select the, uh, select objects. You can also see if we click on the, the small arrow down, there's a lot of things in here. This is a different modes. In this case, we want to be in entity mode. Then you want to click on this or you want to hit W. So we're going to click on the move tool. And this allows us to now select things by right clicking on them. You can see when I hover on an object, it will show a small uh, boundary box. This is basically the size of the model. And then we can right click and now it gives us the the movement or the pivot and movement so we can move these things around basically do whatever you want uh, move it under the ground and make it float uh, so this is how you would go about you know changing and moving things around to right now we're not having an effect because we're not actually working on a Y map. So I'm just going to control set all of this. So we go back to how it was. And then you're going to go into new. I'm just going to click on this little icon here. It's going to open up the project window. So the project window is where we're going to have the majority of the things we're working on. Y types, Y maps, uh, uh, collision files at times and other things. So for this tutorial, we don't want to go too much in depth of how you delete things. I, I have a, a specific tutorial for that. So if you want to, you know, if you want to dig into how you delete uh, things, I suggest you go and look at that one. 
So in this case, we just want to add some of these uh, these blockades here. Uh, the road cones, maybe want to move those. So if we right click and select them, you can click to add to project. This will add the Y map. So this, in this case, it's a Rockstar created Y map to our project. You can also, so if we click on Y map and we remove this from our project, and we select the file, uh, not a file, an entity, and we move it, this will also add it to our Y map. So you can see we now have the Y map. This contains the 429 entities and 18 card generators. So for this specific uh, scenario here, say we want to remove these these uh, cones and we actually want to add a few more of these uh i guess you pronounce it bollards bollards so a, a a rule i personally have is if you want to delete something make sure that it doesn't have lods and make sure it doesn't have a something it's tied to the way you can check this is if you go to view Go to max LD and you go to the LD tab here. You can see everything basically disappears when it comes to those entities, other than this uh, small shack or what do you call it? Uh, the motor parking hut. <clears throat> uh, so if something shows up, that means you should not delete it. You should move it under the ground or uh, just kind of not touch it. <laughs> so again, if you want to get into that, when it comes to uh, deleting uh, things, I suggest you watch the other tutorial I have. That one is pretty decent. So if we go back to Orphan HD, this is gonna show us everything again. Uh, so these two here, they're not tied to anything. They don't have a child, they don't have an LOD. So we can right click on this and we click delete entity and delete entity. Again, this one had, as you can see, an LOD. So this one we don't wanna move or we don't wanna delete. If anything, we would move this under the ground. Uh, but we don't want to. What we want to do is we want to add a few more of these just for the sake of looks. So I want to add these to basically this path going here just to make it a bit more interesting to look at. So what you can do, you can see right now this uh, the arrow is kind of rotated a little bit. So we can click on W. Uh, select them. Select it, click on W. Oh, in this case, this is the default rotation. Let me see if there's a, a rotated one. So you can see if I select the car uh, parking hut and I hit click on W, you can see that the the uh, movement tool is, is, is changing. So this is the default, I think, and this is where it's tied to the rotation of the entity. If I move this and I'll go back to movement, you can see that this moved with the rotation. I'm gonna just move this back. So we're gonna just have to finesse it a little bit, or we can click on our rotate tool, which is E, and then we can move it. You can see when I move this, it has what's called snapping on. So it's moving in like these five degree turns. If you wanna uh, change this, or if you wanna disable it, you can go into this snapping tool up here, click on the small arrow and then rotation snapping. You can set it to off one degree, two, five, 10, etc. I don't mind having it at five degrees. It usually makes it pretty easy to move things around and having it look decent and aligned. Um, what you also, in this case, is probably a good thing to have would be snap to ground. So we're gonna enable snap to ground, which is gonna do basically what it says. It's gonna snap the entity to the entity to the ground. Uh, in this case, it's a bit wonky. All right, I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. So we are just gonna start uh, duplicating these, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our shift button. As you can hear, I'm clicking on shift, holding it down. Then we're just gonna drag. This is gonna make a copy of whatever entity we have selected, and then. We're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to shift drag and shift drag. So now we have these three. So I'm going to select one of them. I'm going to hold control. We're going to select the other one. Again, right clicking and then right click. 
and I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna make a copy. In this case, it's gonna make a copy of all three. And then I'm gonna do this all the way. There we go. Just gonna make sure I select a few more. It's gonna make it quicker. All right. And then shift drag. There we go. This should be roughly what we want it to be, so like that. I'm gonna delete this one. And there we go. So now we have all of these bollards basically copied all the way down to the end. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, if we want to add some new details, uh, you can do it. You can basically update the Rockstar Y map with new details. I don't suggest doing this uh, for a few reasons. It's easier to have it in your own Y map because that makes it easier to well, if you just want to straight up delete it uh, and you want to keep some other changes or it's easy to find and it doesn't mess with anything Rockstar's like Rockstar related. So <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to go to file and you want to click on new and then you want to click on Y map. This is going to add a new Y map to the project. You can also click on this small uh, paper icon or you can click on the small drop down and click on new. Y map. They all do the same. So this one is always going to create a new Y map, I believe. Unless, I guess, it depends on where you have selected. So we have, we're just going to click on new. This is going to create a new Y map, which is just going to be called map one. For now, we we will change this later. Um, and then we're going to start adding some, some objects around here. So what we want, I guess, for this area, we maybe want some uh, some they're not called gates, but they're called something else. So what you can do is you can go to tools <clears throat> and then you can click on world search. This will allow you to search for entities in the world. In this case, I don't remember what that entity is called. So I'm just going to kind of fly around until I find an entity. Uh, and obviously by the top of my head, I know what entity I'm looking for and I know where it's located. So it is located over here. Uh, where am I? There we go. Is it located over here? So this is the one I was talking about. This is called a barrier. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy the name. And then I'm going to go back to our Y map in this case. We don't have anything in this Y map, so I can click on the Y map up here and I can go to an entity and then I can click on go to. This is going to take us straight back to where we were before. I can do the same thing. Say if I want to search for the barrier, uh, it will find the barriers around the, the entire map. If I select one, I can go to entity. This will take us back to another garage. And I can also click on view model. So let's say I want to find some models without having to go look at them all the time or leave the area. Uh, I can click on view model. This will show the model itself and only the model. And then if I just want to go back to the world after I've seen the model, I can click on mode and then go back to world view. And now we're back and we didn't go across the map. All right, so I wanna add these barriers to the entrance here. So I'm gonna minimize this Y map. I'm gonna click on our map one Y map. I'm gonna click on Y map and click on new entity. This is gonna create the default egg. And since we have uh, the snap to ground, so like you can see, it just kind of snap right down to the ground level in archetype. I'm going to remove prop alien egg. I'm going to paste the barrier name. So you can see that the egg now changed to the barrier. What I want to do uh, is I want to line this up. So obviously mess around with this, get, get to know the tools. Uh, right now we have the, the movement tool selected. Now I want to rotate it. So you can hit E or you can click on the rotate tool. And we just kind of want to move this so it, it kind of bits with this area and then we're moving this into place uh, there we go 
Mika. And then just like before, we're gonna hold shift. I'm gonna make a copy. And I think you can see this, if I rotate this, this is gonna be incorrect. So if we're lucky, we change the name from B to A. And you can see this is the rotated version. So we're gonna now move this over here. All right. And this looks all right, I'd say. This is, uh, this is fine. Um, for some reason, and this is a code walker thing, it does sometimes. You can see that it's now showing the LOD for this. Uh, this is the Y map. For some reason, why we have the Y map open. So, if I save this, uh, click on save, it will show up. So, if we create a. Where do we have it? Code Walker. So, Code Walker tutorial, we are going to save our Y maps into a folder that we call Y map. Just going to save this, as you can see. And then we can remove it because we are kind of done. Now we know we made these changes, so we can remove it from the project. So if we do this, you can see that our entities is not, are now going to return. And that's because it defaults back to the normal Y map. Uh, in this case, you can see that the parking structure is back. So if we open the Y map back up, it is now fixed. And this is just a code worker thing. I don't know why it does that, uh, but it does. So, I guess in this case, uh, I feel like this this parking building maybe would fit over here. And like I said before, we don't want to delete it because it has an LOD. So what we can do is we can just move it. So if we select this and just move it over here and then rotate it like so, I'm just going to place it in the middle. And since we now move this, uh, if we move over here, you can see that this structure is now still there because this is the LD that we also need to move. So if we go back down and then we can go to our position. Uh, so if we select, I'm just going to deselect and select this and we're going to make sure we have the parking hut selected. I'm going to go to position. Now we're going to go to max LOD and under LOD, this is now going to show this LOD version, which we're going to add to our project. And then in position, we are going to paste the position. And then we can go back to Orphan, select it, and then we're going to copy the rotation. Go back to LED, select this one, and paste the rotation. Oh, okay, so the rotations are not the same. All right, so we're just going to ro rotate it so it fits. So in this case, I think this is the way to rotate it. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So you can see we now have, let's scroll up here. We now have two Y maps, uh, one called SD, SDRM, oh, and then just 36 without anything at the end. So one is the LODs and the other one is the entities themselves. And you can you can see in, in here that the parent is this file. This is something to do with LODs, which I'm going to get into later on. It's a bit more advanced and kind of can be icky at times. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Again, add, add some more details around this. I'd say this is a good area to play with. So add some, some things around here, some benches, uh, some, some garbage, all that kind of stuff. A good website to, to find all the, the, these details on are find it here this website here i will leave a link in the description so you can find it but in here you basically have every single entity uh you want which you can just search for so this might be an interesting thing <laughs> just for for our testing purposes you can just gonna control c that or we can search for let's say a chair and we're going to click on this and it will just find every single chair in the game. And you can kind of use this as a reference without having to find them in the world. So I'm just going to go back to our, to our map. I'm going to go to Y map, a new entity. In the archetype, I'm going to make it the, uh, the crashed plane. I'm going to 
rotate it a little bit and I'm going to just move it over here. And in this case, you can see it kind of takes the entire plane and puts it into the ground, which we don't want. So we're going to remove the snap to ground and then we're going to move the plane up. So let's see. I think it should be around there where it starts clipping like so. All right. So now we want to save our Y map. So we're going to save both the, uh, the Rockstar Y map. Again, I don't remember if I said this already, but I suggest when you add new details, say the plane and these uh, barriers, add them to your own Y map. Don't put them in a Rockstar Y map. You can, you can copy Rockstar's own entities, but I suggest you put all new things into your own Y map. So I'm going to save these two here. Click on save and then save this one in, in the YMAP folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove them. And then I'm going to save our uh, map one YMAP, which I'm going to call tutorial underscore YMAP. Save that. And then I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to open it. Uh, Code Walker is a bit slow at times at updating some of the names and shit. So when you remove it and you open it back up, everything should be up to speed. So what you want to do from here is you want to click on calculate flags and calculate extents. This button specifically is something you want to just keep in mind. You need to do this every time you change something or you do something. Just cl click on calculate extents and then click on save. Um, something else is, let's say this barrier is is not going to be working as you can see this is definitely not going to be working this when you when you go into game into the game these two are going to be static meaning that they're not going to move they're not going to like you know go up and that's because these are set to uh flag 32. so a good thing to keep in mind is if you know something works and something rockstar has done go look at how they've done it so for these i obviously want to just copy the flags from this to make it do the same thing flags is what can make uh they have a lot of different uh things like you can see allow full rotation disable embedded collision static entity in this case and then some other things allow full rotation is something you want to use pretty often let's say if i rotated this like so and you go into the game and this thing is suddenly back to being straight you want to make sure you have allow full rotation enabled. So in this case, we want to go to entity and select this. And then you can see these are the flags that they use for this barrier. I'm going to just copy these and then select our own uh, barriers up here. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And then we're going to just go back here. This is something I suggest you do a lot. Look at how Rockstar did it and then just copy it. Look at how Rockstar set up their flags for, let's say, a chair or a piece of furniture. Just copy those flags. Um, <clears throat> so, something else for the LOD distance. Uh, you can see if we select the Rockstar one, they have an LOD distance of minus one. That's because they're tied to, I believe, kind of whatever. Uh, I believe this one has an LOD distance of 100. So... These have 200, which is, I'd say is all right. What we can do, and I don't ever suggest doing this, is we can up the LOD so they basically show at all times. Uh, like I said, I don't suggest doing this at all because it's going to fuck with your server. It's going to fuck with FPS. But as an example, I'm going to select one of them and I'm going to set the LOD distance to a thousand. For the other one, I'm going to set this to a uh, to hundred, like the uh, parking uh, hot is just so they're roughly the same so this one is going to show up at a thousand so if you're going to go back to our tutorial y map tutorial y map and we enable the lod flag this is going to allow this one to show up at a thousand meters basically overriding the uh, default i think 200 or 300 meters so i'm going to save this again and what we're gonna what we want to do now is we want to create a manifest so if you click on tools and go to manifest generator 
and you click on generate and then save manifest. What this does is it tells the game that this Y map is using these objects from these, uh, you can basically say these packs or these uh, RPF, maybe not RPF files, but from, from basically these groups of things. So you can see V utility and then APA, MP, APA crash, uh, which is, <clears throat> there's a chance that the, the plane is not going to show up in game. We'll see. If not, it's because some things do not show up uh, just per default, which could be one of these. We'll see when we go in game. So this is manifest of YMF. We're going to save. If you have more of these manifest files, you can rename the manifest to basically whatever you want. So we can call this manifest uh, TU for tutorial. So if you have more than one manifest, make sure you rename them or combine the manifest file. So we're saving this. And now we have the few changes we want. So I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go into our CV tutorial and then into our YMAP. So we have these four files in total. I'm going to assume that you have a 5M server already set up. If you do not, then go uh, go set up a server. I'm going to leave, I think, a link to a decent tutorial on how to create your 5M server. Uh, and when, you're, you, when you've when you done that, come back here. So I'm going to get go into my FX server. I'm going to go into my resources. And I'm going to go into tutorials in this case. In here, I'm going to create a new folder called uh, tutorial underscore changes. And then in here, I am just going to yoink these two. I'm obviously going to leave uh, details for, for both of these things. So actually, let's delete this. So FX manifest of the Lua, I'm going to leave the, the information on that. And then we're going to create a stream folder. And then we go into our FX manifest of the Lua. So this one is necessary. This one is also necessary. If we open the manifest up. It's going to give us these. And in this case, we do not need these files. But what we do need is uh, this is a map. So I'm going to yoink that from there. So we need these three lines. Like I said, I'm going to leave it so you can see what I'm typing. Uh, it's going to be in a description. So we come back to our tutorial changes, go into our streaming folder. I'm going to take these four files, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste them. There we go. And then we're going to go to our res uh, not our resources, but to our server config, where we're going to go to edit, and then we're going to go type in start. Uh, in this case, it's going to be tutorial changes. Um, always when you make a resource, you want to create a folder inside the resource where you have your your other or your folders inside. So in this case, I have a tutorial resource with these tutorial resources inside of it. And I'm going to type start tutorial changes. I'm going to save this. And I'm just going to start up my server. I have this fancy bat, which is going to basically launch 5m for me and start the server and join the server by by itself all right so let's see let's go. Let's see if i can make this go windowed mode so it doesn't lag too much we'll see what happens in a second when i'm in the server Oh. All right. All right, it was going to be a little bit of a jump cut there because my 5M crashed and this was just a, a weird default 5M crash that it does sometimes, nothing related. All right. So in game, I have V menu installed. I suggest you find something like V menu, or something, some some sort of trainer, which is gonna let me hit F two, 
to make me fly. So we're going to fly down to the area that we made changes to. So it's going to be located down at the beach. And what's this? Oh, here. And we hit C to go down. And as you can see, our changes are now reflecting in game. Well, these two here. Let's see if they even if they open up. They do not. Again, this could be a few reasons. Um, in this case, oh, okay, local. Uh, I'm not even going to question that. But yeah, so that's basically it. You you create your Y maps, you change Y maps, <laughs> etc., etc. Uh, and that's basically how you do it. So. I don't know. The only thing left to really say in regards to this is obviously flags are very important in some cases. Uh, say that you want these these road cones here to be not moving. Uh, you want them to be basically a solid rock. That's where you would have static entity enabled on both of these. So that would mean that when you when you drive in here with a car and you hit either of these two, they're just going to not move at all. Other than that, default flags for from like when you create an entity. So if you create a new entity. Uh, let's select something here. So these are usually the default flags, I believe. Something like that. So just use default flags and if you want it to never move just enable static so that's basically it uh, i don't think there's too much too much else to say uh, in regards to the basic use of y maps if not i'll redo the tutorial again to make sure i have <laughs> everything covered all right well i'll see you all in the next one bye